previously on Balls. Hello, Gary. Hi, how are you? Yeah, oh, compliments of the new year. All good, thank you. And yourself? Yes, very well, thank you. Very well. I had a nice Christmas period with the family and... Uh, Obviously, it seems a long time ago already. Yeah, it does. Eh? That month, uh, that holiday period goes through so quickly. You must have had a heck of a party at your house because all your pictures are skewed. <laughs> no. <laughs> it must be all the bad weather we've been having. Yeah, how's that rain and flooding? How's that going at the moment there? The Thames has been flooding. I mean, that's, I never thought we'd hear that. No, it's been a very miserable few weeks. A uh, lot of heavy winds, heavy rain, say flooding. So it's been... Uh, Grey and miserable over Christmas. Uh, not normally the Christmas you'd be expecting. Yes, the palms are so hard to please, though. They, you know, in winter it's too cold and rainy, <laughs> and then they, that's all they talk about. Then in summer it gets it's above. It's too 30. cold and rainy. And then in, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's too cold and rainy. And then in summer it gets above thirty, and everyone drops like flies, and it's too hot. Well, and that's why Gary comes here often. And nothing yes. works. Exactly, and uh, um, we have half an inch of snow, and the whole country comes to a standstill. Exactly. Yeah, and then yeah. there's Germany. Carrying on. <laughs> we still love to use your transport system, though. <laughs> Please. Anyway, over that time, Gary, wow. Uh, none of this mind the gap talk or anything. What a bun fight at the top of the English Premier League. No, none of the sort of big four at the moment want to lose a game. So it's, uh, it's topsy-turvy. We saw Liverpool go top in two days. I think they were top on Christmas Day. And by Boxing Day, they were fourth. And I think by New Year's Day, they were fifth. Yep. I mean, it's been an incredible uh, three or four games over the Christmas period. Mm. Uh, I think even this weekend, if Arsenal, I'm sure you'll be smiling if they do, but if Arsenal win tonight, yeah. then yeah. We'd, we'd have had three different leaders in three days at the top of the table. Uh, so obviously, Chelsea went top on Saturday, Man City went top yesterday, and Arsenal could go top again tonight. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it, it's very, very tight at the top, uh, but also it's tight at the bottom as well. So eight or nine clubs now being drawn into the relegation battle. I think it's probably one of the most interesting premierships uh, for a long, long time. Absolutely. And, and in context of, of what's coming up, uh, tonight's game is vital for Arsenal because Villa obviously beat them in their first game. Uh, they win tonight, they go back on top. But they've got a pretty comfortable, and I say that in a very sort of loose <laughs> way because no game is comfortable, but they've got a pretty comfortable few games coming up. So they've gone through their amen corner, so to speak. Whereas a lot of the top teams will be coming up against each other. So they'll need to get through tonight, stay on top. Because they've got Palace, I think they've got Fulham coming as well. Uh, so they've got a couple of comfortable games before, I think it's you guys actually coming up soon as well. Yeah, and I think, uh, to be honest, um, when you look at it on paper, Arsenal, as you say, have got a very comfortable few games coming up where you'd expect them to get uh, maximum points. Yeah. Having said yeah. that, the Premiership doesn't work like that. And... Uh, you know, it's, there's been so many upsets this season where you know, teams you're expecting to get the results, they don't. Say the first game of the season at uh, the Emirates and Villa beat them there, uh, was, it was a huge shock. And I think throughout the season, you look at all the top teams, they've all been throwing away silly points. Yeah. So yeah. yes, uh, I mean, I think for all people chasing at the top there, it's a case of staying concentrated, making sure that the players are approaching the games like the games against Fulham, as in the games against Liverpool and United and Spurs. Because if you don't do that, you will come a cropper. Yeah. I want to ask you about Man City, because, look, if you look at all the sides, you know, I, I watched Arsenal, I'm, I'm not 100% convinced that they can go all the way this year, as much as I'd love to see them do it. Uh, but you look at Man City and just the, the squad he's got and the way they're <laughs> playing. I mean, they, they've got a 30 something goal difference already. Um, but I think they've conceded more goals than half the teams in the in the league. They're conceding a lot of goals now. Do you think that's going to be a negative for them in the run into this uh, to this uh, this Premier League? Um, they're doing the old. We as long as we score more than they get, it's fine. But somewhere it's going to come back to bite them, maybe. Well, uh, it's coming back to bite them uh, generally. Obviously, a good result at Newcastle over the weekend, but their away form has mm. been very poor this season at home. They've been invincible virtually. Uh, you know, beating Arsenal six, Tottenham six, United four. Um, you know, just scoring goals at will at home. Away from home, they found it a lot more difficult. But if you look overall at the squad of players, and you're saying who do you think is going to be there at the end of the season? Currently, I have to say that Man City have got a great mix in their squad. Mm. They've got a good mix of youth and experience uh, at home. I mean, the strike force they have is always going to be causing problems for defences, if they can just tighten up defensively away from home. 
then I think Man City have got the best opportunity of, uh, of winning it this season. That Newcastle game, that uh, Newcastle goal that could have changed the entire game, the complexion of the game, City scored their second into injury time, so uh, it would have made it 1-1. Uh, what, what was your take on it, just the uh, highly disputed uh, goal that, that led Alan Pardew to utter a few naughty words to the Man City coach? Well, <laughs> well again, it's a difficult one to look at. <coughs> I'm not really allowed to comment because I actually work on the FA disciplinary committee, so... We have a lot of these issues coming up and uh, unfortunately all the ramifications of the managers uh, having to be up before us for words they shouldn't have spoken, unfortunately, after games when they're in their highest state of frustration. So, uh, again, over, over a season, I honestly believe that these things equal themselves out. Yeah. Uh, uh. You get some going for you, some going against you. When it happens at crucial times, that's when the managers get more and more frustrated um, but uh, overall, I, I think uh, yeah, these things are going to happen during the season and you've just got to accept it, take it on the chin and on, on to the next. Okay, Otherwise, uh, the FA have a lot more work to do. Go on, Gary. Just say out it was a rubbish decision and make yourself a YouTube <laughs> sensation. <laughs> <laughs> but just tell us what the technicality is because having a look at it, uh, obviously if a player is in an offside position but not interfering with the, uh, let's say, the act of the goal being scored, uh, then he's not offside. Now, the angle that I looked at where the shot came from, and he hit it from a long way out, it never looked like the keeper was ever going to get to it. Uh, it wasn't the keeper that was being obscured, but they're saying that the, def the other defender could possibly have been affected, although I don't know what he would have done in that situation. Yes, I mean, I, I think they are stretching a point, to be fair. Um, if, let's say, the goalkeeper, let's say a player's in an offside position, somebody shoots from outside the box, the goalkeeper makes a save, and then that player who's in an offside position then runs in and scores the goal. That goal will be disallowed, yeah. and he will be given offside. From the straight shot from outside the box, I mean, if he's standing right in front of the keeper, then, of course, the referee's got to make a decision then. But generally, um, if the keeper's not, if vision's not being uh, impaired by it, then generally the goal will be allowed. Mm. All right. Uh, at this stage in the new year, I know, who did you predict as uh, league champions? when we started the season again? I think I probably went for... I think I may have gone for Man City. Mm. Um, Do you still feel that way? Obviously, my concern was, again, they've had it, but my concern was that, you know, the, the Liverpools, the United, you know, the, the changing of managers, that that will allow teams to, you know, it takes a while for everything to get uh, bedded down. I think I may have been saying about Arsenal and, and Spurs mm. as well. And of course, Spurs have now changed their manager since the last time we spoke. Um, with obviously Villa Boas going and uh, Tim Sherwood, along with Chris Ramsey, Les Ferdinand, Tony Parks, and Stefan Freund, uh, all Tottenham people now running running the team as a as a management group. Happy about that? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a a great opportunity, um, you know, for for Tim and for the management team. Chris Ramsey, uh, I've worked with Chris for a lot and Chris is a fantastic coach um, you know Les brings his experience there Tony Parks was our goalkeeper in the UEFA Cup in 1984 an excellent goalkeeping coach Stefan Freund's a great character at the club and of course Tim played for us mm. and uh, you know he's so far he's unbeaten in his premiership game so uh, long may that continue here we go. Uh, it's a, it's a, as you, you, you said it uh, earlier on, it's one of the most exciting Premier Leagues and it's, uh, it's only just after the halfway mark. But uh, it's going to be a bun fight all the way down to the final straight and the final few weeks. going to be fascinating stuff. Gary, all the best. We hope 2014 is going to be a, a fabulous year for you and uh, look forward to chatting to you and getting your wisdom again during the course of the year as well. Thanks, guys, and say hi to everyone in South Africa for me. Thanks, well, Gary. Will Cheers, do, Gary. Gary. Cheers, bye-bye. Cheers, right. guys. Thank you. Bye, bye Gary. Bye. Gary Mabbott joining us from London, a wet and cold mm. London, mm. on uh, Balls Visual Radio and Mix 93.8 FM. Visual Radio. Weekdays from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central African time. Radio like you've never seen it before. Balls.co.za.